most people don't realize how much you actually see. Guys, look. Look at the heartbeat. The baby is five weeks. What you just saw right there was the flutter of a heartbeat at just five weeks. But if you ask the New York Times, they tell you that's up for debate. It's not a heartbeat, but rather a series of electrical pulses. Today in our series, Roe, Political and Politics of Life, we break down the science and what it tells us about life. To discuss is our panel of medical experts, Dr. George Delgado. He's the president of the Steno Institute and the medical director at Culture of Life Family Healthcare. He's also spearheaded extensive research on abortion pill reversal. We're also joined by Dr. Christina Francis, the chairwoman of the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetrician and Gynecologists. Doctors, it's such an honor again to have you back with us for this series. Uh, Dr. Delgado, I'll start with you. I mean, where do you come down on a fetal heartbeat versus some electrical pulse? Well, what is a heartbeat? A heartbeat is actually electrical activity, which causes muscle fibers to contract, which is, leads to the blood being pumped. So you wouldn't expect the very earliest heart to look like a well-developed heart, but you would expect it to do things similar to what an adult heart does, which is have electrical activity, which cause contraction of muscle fibrils. So I would say that that is a heartbeat because that's what everybody thinks what a heart does, and that exactly is what a heart does. You know, Dr. Francis, it's really interesting. We know when life ends, you know, it's mm -hmm. pretty clear. Why is it so difficult for science to be clear on when it begins. It seems like a lot of doctors are silent on this topic. Well, you know, Lindsay, you're right. And thank you so much for having us today. It actually, the science is very clear on when life begins. So we know that at the moment of fertilization, at the moment of sperm egg fusion, each of those individual cells, the sperm and the egg cease to exist. And immediately you have a distinct living and whole human being that meets all of the scientific criteria for a living organism. So we actually know beyond a shadow of a doubt when life begins, and that's at the moment of fertilization. We may not be able to see evidence of that life with the naked eye, um, but we know, you know by looking under the microscope, even at that very earliest stage of a single cell zygote, that that actually is a living human being at that moment. Why are so many people walking away from that and or it feels like they're walking away from that in the science community? Well, you know, I think because they're being swayed by um, political agendas or maybe they're being swayed by what they think is right. You know, they think they're doing the compassionate thing for women by supporting abortion rights. And it's very difficult to support abortion when you acknowledge that that is in fact a living human being because then you're forced to acknowledge that what an abortion does which is end the life of that um, embryonic or fetal human being you know dr delgado when i when i think about the pro-abortion movement a lot of the talking points are about women's health um, about taking care of women's health and they don't talk about the baby a lot and but when they talk about abortion they they make it very simple it's a simple procedure it's generally safe, it's effective, there's really no harm to the mother. Is that your experience? I mean, what is there any harm for a woman to terminate a pregnancy unnaturally? Well, those facts are very well known. And unfortunately, those, of course, are obfuscated by the medical abortion complex. Because remember that Planned Parenthood is a billion dollar a year business and abortion overall is a multi-billion dollar business. So if you follow the money, the money will lead to lies covering up all the science. And we know that women are harmed by abortion. There are risks of hemorrhage, of infection. And we know that a woman who's had one abortion has about a 30% chance of increased preterm labor which will affect future pregnancies. And if she's had two or more, then the risk approaches a 200% increase of preterm labor. And we know, of course, that preterm labor, if a baby's born before 32 weeks, that greatly increases the risk of future breast cancer. So there are all sorts of cascading effects of risks that the woman is undertaking. It's also been said that medical abortion is much safer than surgical abortion, but a landmark study from Finland, which has a highly developed medical system, showed that the risks of medical abortion were higher than the risks of surgical abortion. And the risks were about 5.6% overall with surgical abortion, but 20% with medical abortion. And we know that now, of course, we're going toward more medical abortions in our country with over 50% of them now being medical abortions and more to come in the post-Roe world. 
you know, Dr. Francis, one of the biggest narratives as well from the pro-abortion <laughs> movement is that abortion empowers women. It gives them the right to thrive in society. Evidence has come out that there is a lot of depression, actually, ar mm -hmm. around abortion patients and mis mental health issues that come thereafter. However, the pro-abortion group, the Guttmacher Institute, argues that there's no evidence that having abortion is itself responsible for mental health problems. What has your experience been? Well, my experience and, and that of our other APLOG members and, you know, other physicians who take care of women who have had abortions in their past is exactly the opposite of what the Guttmacher Institute has found. So there was actually a very large study done by Priscilla Coleman, which looked at all of the medical literature that exists on the link between abortion and mental health outcomes. And what she found was that 65% of those studies showed a significant link between abortion and adverse mental health outcomes. And one of those same studies that Dr. Delgado was just referencing out of Finland actually showed that post-abortive women have a seven times increased risk of suicide compared to women who have not had abortions. This is not empowering to women. You know, we know that it has adverse mental health effects, which is just exacerbating the mental health crisis that we already have in this country. I'm sure Dr. Delgado is seeing the same thing I am in his practice as I am in mine. You know, women that are suffering mentally from abortions, from other things that have happened in their life, and they don't have access to good mental health care. And we're just exacerbating that by promoting abortion to women. But, you know, the other thing I think that is not empowering to women about abortion is it's very demeaning, I think, as a woman and as a physician to tell women that in order to achieve their goals, in order to have success in life, they have to be able to kill their children through abortion. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is not empowering. And we know that the abortion industry actually seeks to oppress women by hiding information from them, such as what Dr. Delgado just referenced, the risks involved with abortion. Women are not being told this. They're being told that it's safe and um, you know, a simple procedure or in the case of medication abortion, that it's just as safe as taking Tylenol, they're being lied to. And we believe that at the very least, women deserve fully informed consent to know about all of the risks that are involved with an abortion if they're contemplating having one. Wow, Dr. George Delgado, Dr. Christina Francis, I wish I had more time with you because it's so important that we get the science out there and inform our communities, inform women and families about the truth, about what science is really telling us because it really seems like the left is trying to downplay this and hide it and appreciate you um, really giving us a good take today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having right. us.